In this video, I'm going to share my experience with owning a 2020 Ram Rebel for 10,000 miles and also answer the most common questions you guys have asked in the comments regarding the wheel setup, the tires, leveling kit and so on. And I'm also going to let you know of any issues I've had with the truck over the 10,000 miles I've put on it. Buying a new truck or any vehicle for that matter is a big deal and with that comes a lot of questions about modifications and of course owner's reviews. You kind of want to hear from the owners themselves what they think about the car. I remember when I was buying mine, I wanted to know everything there was to know about it before pulling the trigger. Pretty much all my modifications are listed down in the description of the video. So if you see something you must have for your truck, you can use the links down below for more information. I've driven it on long road trips to North Carolina, found some nice trails up there and even got lucky with some snow up in the Smokies. I've also been doing a bit of off-roading here in Florida and I'm actually going back there to film another video this week. So make sure you like and subscribe this video if you find it helpful. It really helps me out and of course it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. With that said, let's jump into your questions and hopefully I can help you out with some of them. use the mess in here I always have a towel in here because after the gym I get all sweaty I don't want to have it on the seat so I just put the towel on there sixteen thousand seven hundred and twenty miles never gets old. I just got the truck back about 100 miles ago from my second oil change. So as I said, what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to talk about the experience of uh, owning this truck for 10,000 miles or so now. Just share my experiences with you and let you know what I think about it, if it's been good or if it's been any issues. And I can tell you right from the start, I'm not going to drag it out. The, the thing is, I've had absolutely zero issues with this truck no not even a small little glitch in the display or something like that for example nothing like that it's been absolutely perfect the only maintenance i've done is uh, were the two oil changes so this were my second one i do them with about 5,000 miles intervals and it's just been overall a fantastic truck i still love to drive it just as much as i did the first day when I took delivery of the truck. I bought it used and I bought it with about 6,000 miles on it or something like that. I can't really remember the exact number. And we've been all over the place as I showed you in the beginning. So I've, I've really tested the truck over these 10,000 miles and also of course made a lot of modifications to it to turn it into sort of an overland build and that's exactly what the plan was from day one when I decided to buy this truck since we're uh, moving to Colorado a little later than expected now we were supposed to move at the end of April which I've mentioned before here on the channel but it didn't work out with the lease and so on headaches you know how it goes so instead we're gonna move now in the end of September let's head out to the park if we get there today that's a different question with this crazy traffic that we have these days but let's get out there and let's look at some questions that you guys have and hopefully I will be able to answer them and maybe help you out a little bit if you're looking into getting a RAM or if you have a RAM already and you want to do some of the modifications that I've done to mine I'm gonna let you know exactly what I did and uh, answer the questions that you have about the mods that I put on the truck. All right, so here we are. So let's jump in to the questions. Question number one, does your Overland rack fit a bed with tonneau cover? This specific rack does not because I have, uh, they go under this thing right here. So you can't really have a tonneau cover covering here because you need these C-clamps to go underneath. But I guess if you were to order this with the drill option, um, maybe you could fit it, but I ordered without the drill option because I didn't want to drill in, in, in the bed itself. So I got these C-clamps and as you can see, it's not gonna fit with the tonneau cover. But overall, I'm super happy with the uh, bed rack itself and I've had the tent up there. I just took it off uh, a couple of weeks ago. Zero issues with the, with the uh, bed rack and it's a fantastic quality product as well. So I'm super happy with how this turned out and also the look of it. I wanted this more industrial look for the bed rack and I think the RCI 
rack uh, does just that with the looks of it and of course all the uh, mods and things that i'm talking about in this video it's going to be linked down in the description if you're looking to get something like this for your truck so question number two how long did it take you to install the bed rack i have a 2021 rebel and i've been looking at the same one you have thanks i can't really remember how long it took to install it i think it was pretty straightforward because it is not a very complicated rack to install you have these pieces right here so you have this separate piece and then you have the middle part and the same mirrored piece on this side and then you just slide them together right, right here and connect them with these nuts and uh, bolts right here so it's really easy to do and then you put those two uh, bars on top and they just slide into these bars right here so it's a perfect fit and maybe it took uh, if i were to do it again it would definitely be quicker but i didn't have any um, guide i think it came with a guide but the guide wasn't really that clear but as i said it's a pretty straightforward design so it will take you maybe two hours or something like that question number three says from rd says awesome setup thank you have you had any issues with the leveling kit so i have had uh, zero issues with the leveling kit i did make a mistake when i put it on and that was i forgot to do the alignment right away and what that did is of course when you raise the front end it's gonna switch out the uh, the geometry between the steering racks so the steering wheel is gonna sit a little bit to tilt it to the side so what you want to do is just take it to an auto shop and have it aligned as soon as you get the leveling kit on there otherwise you're gonna have the issue of uh, the car the truck thinking that the car is in a constant drift because of the uh, rotated the steering wheel and you're gonna get some warning lights on the dash with the traction control i can't remember exactly what issues i had but all that went away as soon as i just uh, went in and did the alignment which i waited maybe a day or two to do which i should have done immediately when i got the leveling kit on there so no issues with the leveling kit at all and of course i just think it looks so much better with the leveling kit on there because now we have the rear and the front being at the same ride height instead of having that you know traditional or typical truck rake where the, the rear end sits a little higher than the front end and that leads me to another question which is about the wheels if you want to fit the uh, 35 inch wheels on your rebel you're gonna need at least a leveling kit or if you want to go even higher than that you just raise it up with a uh, lift kit next question comes from rebel rob i believe and he asks any issues with knocking front end after install have heard installing two inch leveling kit and not upgrading or replacing the shock struts that it can cause a clunk sound from the upper control arms on rough bumps and when off-roading so yes i did have the uh, the steering wheel was offset when i first put the leveling kit on there obviously and then also the clunking sound once again if you're doing a leveling kit or a lift kit i think it's even more important just as soon as you get it done just make sure you get that alignment done as well here's another question from rebel rob it's about the uh, the pet cover for my rear seat so i have a huge pet cover in the back and this is specifically made for this truck so it looks like this and it goes up like this on the sides as well so if you want to have your you know the side of the doors you want to have that covered as well just put this up and hang it up there and then jules can jump in there and she can just have her own little cozy luxury apartment back here when we're going on long road trips and so on so this has worked really well it's called iBuddy and this is linked down below if you want to get this yourself. This is a question I got pretty often and that is did I do any uh, cal calibration to the speedometer after installing bigger tires? It's interesting because I thought I was gonna have to do that but then we did sort of a, um, a speed test so we ran the truck at 70 miles per hour and we had an app showing exactly what our speed was or as good as it gets with an app and it showed pretty close to 70. It was off by maybe one or two miles per hour at 70 miles per hour so i thought it's not that big of a deal i don't want to go into the dealer and just have them adjust a couple of miles per hour at 70 miles so i did not calibrate anything in regards to the speedometer after putting the wheels and the leveling kit on the truck another really common question is about these tires now I, from what i've heard these days today and compared to six months ago it's really hard to find any uh or if you're looking for a specific set of tires it's really hard 
to find usually the specific set that you're looking for. There's a lot of uh, tires at the moment that are out of stock and I think sometimes you, in most in a lot of cases you're just gonna have to wait until they get back in stock to order them but these are the Fury Country Hunter RTs and I'm really happy with these tires. I think I've had them on for maybe seven or eight thousand miles now and as I said, I've been in dirt, I've been in snow, in mud, on the highway. And the thing that was really important to me when picking the tires were to just have them be quiet. I didn't want to have them make a lot of noise. When specifically when I was on the highway, I don't want to have that droning noise that you usually overhear a lot of times when you have lifted trucks. That's not something that I wanted. And these ride as well if not even better than the uh, stock wheels and tires that are 33 inches i'm really happy with the setup right here i think they look have the right look to them as well they're not overly aggressive but at the same time it just suits the overall look of the truck in my opinion so if you can't find these right now i don't know i guess you just have to wait until they get back in stock I haven't really seen them on any other truck so far but at the same time they're really well priced as well and you can see that there is a lot of tread left on these tires i rotated them with the last oil change as well so uh yeah if you're looking for tires 35 inch tires for your truck and you want to have something that's both comfortable on the highway and good off-road i can't recommend the fury country hunter rts enough fantastic tires so far and zero issues there another question about the tires is uh, from comes from tom mccolloy he asked what are the specs of the tires are they rt yes they are rts as you can see right there and the specs for the measurements are 35 by 12 and a half or 20s and these are of course 20 inch fuel rebel wheels and i also like the design of these wheels i think they suit this truck overall also not too aggressive they have this bead lock style to them which i think it just adds a little bit style and uh, off-road feel to the design of the wheels but the tires and the wheels themselves i think it's a good combo and also same thing here i'm really happy with this setup and how it turned out next question comes from jason and he asked did you do any trimming for the 35s to fit without rubbing yes i had to do some trimming and it wasn't a lot you can see it right here i think you can see it better on the other side there's a little bit of a cut in the plastic though so i didn't have to do any metal cutting at all and that's something that i didn't want to do in the first place but you can see that this area right here this is all i had to do to uh, to fit these tires and talking about rubbing it i really have minimal issues with rubbing if we have five people in there and the tent in the rear sometimes when i take a right turn and go over a bump you can hear something catching the tire but that's pretty much the only uh, situation where i would have some rubbing and that only comes weirdly enough from this side so the the passenger side front end and looking at the tire itself you can't really tell that it has been you know rubbing at all so i guess it's just a minor rub when you have those circumstances that i just talked about now the last question i think this is a great question something that i would definitely want to know myself is uh, i just picked up the 22 rebel gt great choice by the way that was not available when i bought this one so congratulations on that and he's loving it so far question for you how has the rack and tent lights and all the mods affected the noise level in the cab and fuel economy so this is a really interesting thing because when i put the wheels on here specifically the wheels but also you know the tent and the rack it gets a little heavier and of course there's a lot more mass in the wheels so i thought the mpg is going to go down pretty significantly but right now i'm sitting at a i mean if to me impressive 13 miles per gallon i know i know it's a lot better than the uh, 19 what was it 1989 jeep cherokee sport i had and that was an inline six and we got like nine ten miles per gallon on that one so i'm not complaining i think 13 miles per gallon with all that i've done to the truck it's not a bad deal and then of course it depends on how you drive the truck you have a massive v8 under there sometimes you just want to have more fun I like to just get up to speed as quickly as possible and then just cruise in uh, you know up when I get up to speed instead of just slowly dragging out the acceleration first of all it's a lot more fun to just press it and get up to speed fast and it's also going to help your fuel consumption I believe 
rather than just having a slow acceleration up to whatever speed uh, you're you're going at so talking about the noise in the cabin same thing there i really haven't had any issues with the noise inside of the cabin not even at highway speeds it's still very quiet it feels super luxurious in there it is a luxury truck so that hasn't changed just by the fact that I switched out the wheels and tires and put that tent on there. It's still super comfortable and it swallows all everything you can uh, throw at it, no problems at all. And the wind noise, I haven't really experienced an increase in any wind noise since I put the tent on because I have the, uh, the slim rack here as you can see. So it doesn't stick up that far. It sticks up almost halfway up through the cab and putting the tent up is not going to create a lot of drag back there. And I think that is really helpful if you want to bring down the wind or, or not to have a substantial wind noise increase and also for the fuel consumption you're gonna get a lot better if it sits below the cab whatever you put on the bed mine sticks up maybe a couple of inches above the cab i don't think that's a big deal and it doesn't reflect in the mpg or the wind noise either we have one more question from trader joe and he asked why did you pick a ram and i've talked about this before first of all it has spring suspension in the rear and that is something that i really wanted to have because it makes the ride a lot more comfortable and also I'm not going to I'm not ever going to reach the extreme limits of what any of the half ton trucks are capable in when it comes to towing or load capacity or what have or payload so I'm not going to be up in those extreme numbers so it made sense to me to go with maybe a little less payload and a lot more comfort and that's the reason why I bought the Ram over the Tundra or Silverado or F-150 or what have you and also looking at the design in my opinion the Rams right now I think they are crushing it when it comes to design it's just a beautiful looking truck this front face one of my favorite front faces ever of a truck I love this little chamfer that you have right here it looks like this part sticks out from underneath the hood and it kind of grows even further with this different material here that you have from the hood and this little dip here where you can find the uh, the latch for the hood very easily and also this mustache that I, I know some people don't like it's specific for the for the rebel I think it looks really really cool and also the, the lights of course when you have the daytime running lights on you have an LED a little thicker down at the bottom and a uh, thinner one up top it creates a really distinct front fascia when I saw this one in all black with the black whatever it's called the night package or something like that I just knew that this is the truck that I wanted to have specifically when I envisioned it with the 35 inch wheels and everything that I wanted to put on it we also have the lights of course the aux beam uh, pod lights in the in each corner next to the a pillars in the base of the a pillars i have installed videos on all the mods here on the channel so you can go and check out how to install all the mods as well and we have the 12 inch light bar hiding behind the grill down there i don't know if you can see it but it's there and that took a lot of work by my neighbor chuck he did all of it he just ripped apart the entire front end and just slapped the, um, the the light bar in there really nice job and it looks fantastic you can't barely tell that it's a light bar in there but it really shines up the night when you turn it on and it's dark out so those are the most common asked questions that i see here on the channel it's really cool as i said to see everybody getting excited about ram just by looking at the videos and also asking questions and sharing your experiences in the comments as well it's really cool to see that i think whatever you choose whatever ram you decide to go with if it's the rebel 1500 the the big horn you're gonna be happy with the uh the truck i have zero issues as i said it's just overall a fantastic truck both in design and in functionality I have yet to put it into something that it couldn't get itself out of and that is without you know <laughs> lowering the pressures in the tires and so on that's gonna come later on probably when we're moving up to Colorado make sure you subscribe and like please like this video it means a lot to me and also to the YouTube algorithm so more people can find out about these beautiful machines that are the Ram 1500s as always if you have any more questions feel free to uh, post it down below in the comments I'm more than happy to try and answer them for you and make sure you subscribe because this week next week I'm going back to JW Corvette I'm gonna do some mudding there it's gonna be a lot of fun hopefully I get stuck this time and we have to figure something out 
Uh, I'm gonna post a video up here on the channel as well. So make sure you subscribe and again, like the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.